And that's what it's felt like for him through three starts because he's been on cruise control. Impeccable is a great word for his performances so far. He usually is all over the strike zone. You're going to see that velocity be in that 92 to 94 mile per hour range uh, and outstanding breaking ball change up. And if you swing at that ball up in the zone, up in the letters, you're just helping out Luke Holman. He, he, he is going to be tough if you cannot swing at strikes only. That time he threw it by the leadoff batter. Hendrickson is hitting 314. McCormick, who's on deck, is at 347. And Walksman leads the team at 464. Holman comes right back and takes care of business. Hendrickson goes down on strikes. Well, you know, LSU was uh, knew they had some talented pitchers, but they had to replace Paul Skeens. This is through 18 innings, the first 18 innings of Paul Skeens' career at LSU and Luke Holman's. And, boy, don't they look very similar. Eight hits allowed for Luke Holman, six for Skeens. Strikeouts are pretty close. Skeens had two an inning. Holman has uh, almost two an inning, and both of them, had a combined three walks. I mean, that is those are those numbers are Paul Skeen's S. Now they do it different ways. You're not going to see 100, 102 miles an hour out of Luke Holman, but the results are very similar. The remarkable thing to me, Ronnie, is how much good stuff they have, but how many times they get the ball over the plate. Not just a strike, but a strike where they want to throw the ball. Yeah, the command look right here. You see Neil. There's the first breaking ball of the night, a 79 mile an hour yacker. And, you know, we we talk about, you know, that velocity, 93, 94, and the command, but the Holman has the wipeout pitch, has the ability to put hitters away with that breaking ball. McCormick is making his 14th start. He is the third player in this lineup who has started every game. 17 base hits, four homers. He leads in that department and 13 driven in. This will be a chance for the center fielder coming hard and making a galloping grab is Paxton Kling. That looked like it might find the grass, but Kling was running toward the infield at the crack of the bat. Let's take a look at uh, LSU defensively. That's Bingham and Kling and Larson in the outfield. White and Braswell on the left side of the infield. Milam and Jones on the right side. And Neal is catching. Yeah, just to, for those at home that may have gasped, Hayden Dravinsky is not in center field tonight. That would be the story. That would be the story of the evening if they gave him a start in center field. But, but uh, Paxton Kling has had quite the week. He had quite the game against uh, Southeastern on Tuesday. He made a great catch. But in that game on Wednesday, when they came from behind, down two in the ninth inning, not only did he have the game-winning RBIs, but he also had a big out at second base in the bottom of the eighth when he was covering the bag at second. When do you see a center fielder covering the bag at second? Well, he did. That was a giant out in the inning to shut down that Southeastern rally and give LSU a chance going into the ninth inning. The Tigers were down to one pitch from being defeated in that game but came back to win it. The Lions were one strike away from pulling off the victory. I think the only thing more impressive about LSU's uh, comeback victory on, front, on, on Wednesday when they were down two runs with two outs and two strikes in the ninth was Nate Ackenhausen, who mm -hmm. got the save. He struck out three batters on ten pitches in the bottom of the ninth on the road against Southeastern. Now, it's about as good an inning as you probably have ever seen in the history of LSU baseball. That's it sharply. White's got it at third, gets up, fires the strike across. Jared Jones is waiting. Nicely done on the hot corner by Tommy White. We'll take an opponents are hitting a whopping 333 against Luke Hoskins. He has not missed a lot of bats through his first three starts. No, that's been the problem. The walks number is very good. He hasn't hurt himself with bases on balls. Striking out just about one per inning. But he has yielded a lot of base hits in the early going. That's been a, a Xavier uh, problem as a staff. They have an ERA as a team over seven. 7.05 earned run average this year as a staff for Xavier through the first 13 games. 
cling at the top of the order for the last week and a half or so. He's had a seven game hitting streak this year. Right now he's hit in his last two games. Uh, it, you know, if Paxton Kling can keep his average or, or check that more as on base percentage at a high clip, you'd like to see him stay in that first spot if possible because he's one of their best base dealers. He's, he's got four stolen bases and four attempts this year, and this is a team that doesn't run a ton, but I do think they will run more this year than they've ever run uh, in the, Jay Johnson's first two seasons. And Bat Rouge. Well, Kling has attempted four stolen bases. That's the high water mark on the team. He's four for four. Milam is three for three. And after that, their base stealers are very rare. Two balls, two strikes on Kling. He takes that wide stance, a slightly open stance. He'll close it at the delivery, and that's chopped foul. We got started an hour and a half late tonight. The grounds crew did a terrific job of making this field not only playable, but pretty good shape. It's a little soft in the outfield, but no standing water. The infield was covered. It's always a bit amusing to me, Ronnie, to see before the game after rain somebody's hosing down the infield and they're pumping <laughs> water off the outfield yeah yeah it's been a, a nasty day in baton rouge it's been raining uh, mostly on versus off since uh, about one o'clock cling is called out on a pretty good fastball that got the outside edge let's take a look defensively hendrickson schultz and Waxman in the outfield Hammond and Stevenson are on the left side of the diamond. Cushing and McCormick are the second baseman and first baseman, respectively. And Dupre is catching Hoskins. Here's Milam. He's one of the major stories in the still young part of this season. First pitch swinging and lashes it foul. Well, there's so many talented players uh, in the lineup. I mean, we, we see Today for LSU, there are two true freshmen in their lineup. Ashton Larson starting in right field. The Overland Park, Kansas freshman. And then there's Milam, laces that single right up the middle. His 18th base hit of the year. That ties him for the team lead with the, the guy who's coming up next and Tommy White. And uh, Coach Berkman, uh, got to give him credit. He had the eye for him. That pitch is a good one. That's on the outside corner. He. He saw Milan play a little bit in the fall, and uh, he pulled him aside at a team function in January and said, hey, big guy, yeah, I really like you. I think you're going to be a heck of a player. You really are a good player. And you know, I'm sure that gave them a, a little confidence when the legend kind of dabs you, tabs you before the season as a guy, to, a player to watch. And he has a very good strike zone. He plays a very good defense. He's quick. He's fast. He's exactly what you want and as a college second baseman. He's also hit consecutively now in four games with that single up the middle. He and White have 36 base hits divided equally between them now. Tommy on a six-game hitting streak. Well, plus the other thing Milan does very well is he, he, he has very good strike zone recognition, which is the key for a young hitter. You know, oftentimes you, those young hitters will overly aggressive, chase down in the dirt, chase up and in, just trying to make something happen so much. But Milam has patience at the plate. White smashes it up the middle. It has enough juice on it to get it to center field. Milam makes the big turn and now has to scramble back. So back to back, solid base hits by Milam and White. See White doing a little more of this. You know, he had a base hit to right field uh, over at Southeastern. You know, he's staying inside the ball a little more, hitting it the other way. And if you remember last year when he had that sensational season, about half of his homers were to, to, to center and right center and right field. And early on in the season, I thought Tommy was maybe getting a little pull happy. And he, I think he's made a concerted effort to try to hit the ball up the middle and the other way. Well, in his first two years, he hit 51 home runs combined, and nearly half of them were to the opposite field. Here's Brady Neal out of Tallahassee, Florida. 
Neal is behind the plate tonight. He's on a four game hitting streak. Hendrickson is back. This ball is drifting. He's at the wall. He leaps. He cannot get it. Milam is being waved around third. And he will score standing up. That ball just kept carrying and floating toward the left field wall. Carter Hendrickson went back. It looked like he was under it. He jumped, but he couldn't get it. And it bounced off the wall away from his club, and that'll be a two-bagger and an RBI. Now the wind is blowing in from center field. If it's not, this ball's going to make it into the stands. Neil thought he got enough of it to run it out of the ballpark. And right there, the unfamiliarity of the ballpark in left field probably uh, hurt, it, hurt Hendrickson a little bit right there. He had more room than I think he thought he did. And just, uh, this game is a matter of inches, and it almost looked like it was going to be an out. It was just above his glove, and LSU now has a chance at a big inning. Neal with six doubles now and 12 driven in. In this, his 10th start and his 12th appearance. Dravinsky at the plate. The 1 0 drops in for a strike. Travinsky hitting a solid 349. He would like to improve his power numbers a bit. He was so, so good the last month, six weeks of the season, including postseason last year. Now, last year's lineup for LSU was so stacked that, quite frankly, hate Travinsky kind of snuck up on opponents, you know, the, the, the when he got in the chance that first few weeks of the season because you focus so much on on Cruz and Dugas and uh, Joe Bear and, 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 you know, Tommy White, and all of a sudden you, you kind of relax and Hayden Dravinsky made you pay. Schultz is backpedaling in a hurry. This is plenty deep. Tommy White scores easily from third base on the sacrifice fly, and Brady Neal had no trouble moving from second to third. So Travinsky hits it about 390 feet to straightaway center field. And the Tigers have a 2 nothing lead. Now, Travinsky did his job with that runner at third, less than two outs, lift the fly ball to the outfield, and the LSU able to put up the inevitable two on the board against Xavier. It's a story they have seen all too often this year with that team seven ERA coming into uh, tonight. Here's Ashton Larson. The freshman has had only six at bats. But he's converted those into four hits and three driven in. And Jay Johnson has said that this young fellow deserves to get a little more playing time, and he's getting some tonight. He rolls it to the right side, and the second baseman is able to turn it and propelled LSU to a 2 nothing lead. And Isaac Walshman leads it off for Xavier. He is first pitch swinging. And this ball is well out of reach up in the bleachers in the extreme right corner. These teams have never played before in baseball. LSU is 12 and 1. And this is exactly the same record the Tigers had last year after 13 games. Boy, Waxman, the sophomore, has uh, gotten off to a really good start. 28 at-bats, 13 hits. And has the four bombs. I mean, you talk about, about that slugging percentage right now, 929. Take a look at what he did in four games last week. Three homers, <laughs> six driven in, 600 batting average, and a slugging percentage off the chart. But he didn't face any pitching nope. like Luke Holman. Nope. Holman going to... He went hard in 92 94 on the hands and then that 83 mile an hour breaking ball down and away. That's just not fair. You've just seen heat on your hands for three pitches and then just snaps off that outstanding breaking ball down and away. I mean, is he even sweating? I mean, I know it's a cool night, but it doesn't even look like he's breaking a sweat. That's what Lumi will do for you. Jared Cushing out of 
Naperville, Illinois. The 1 0 pitch over the top, and that burns the edge. Cushing batting 255. He's driven in 11 with one home run. Kling is coming hard. So is the right fielder, and it is the latter who makes the play. That's Larson able to get the proper angle and call off Kling and Milam. Have we seen a Larson in an LSU uniform since 1997? I'm not quite sure. Good but, point. Uh, last, last guy to have that uh, name on the back of his shirt was a pretty good one. He had almost as many homers as his number. He had 40 home runs that year. Brandon Larson, the Blinn Junior College transfer who uh, set the country on fire, became a first-round pick of the Cincinnati Reds as LSU went, to win, went on to win its fourth national championship that year. But I've never seen a season as great as Todd Walker and Eddie Furness were, uh, and obviously Dylan Cruz and others. Brandon Larson, no one's had a season like that. You know, 40 homers and, and from all directions. And a very good defensive shortstop, too. Now this supposedly hit him. You, can you tell him? Not on that angle. I mean, I don't think it did. I think that's the old ouch play. I think he out outsmarted the, uh, outacted the umpire. Ooh, Holman slipped and fell. He, he tried to pick off the first and uh, did the splits over there on the mound. But the, the ouch play, I mean, you actually, you know, we would work on that in practice in college for Skip Bertman. You know, you, you, a few times in the fall where guys would practice acting like they got hit. You got to sell it a little bit. You got to shake the hand. You got to do exactly exactly what the prey did. Who was the best actor? Oh, man, I don't know. Tookie Johnson was pretty good at it. He was a guy. That How about could, Louis Garcia? He wound oh, up in yeah, the movies. Well, you know, no doubt. He was probably the best actor of them all. Mike Papa John saw him today. He's a guy who was a pretty good actor. Went on, I think he's done over 200 movies. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, he's around the ballpark and living in Baton Rouge. Still doing LSU stunts. Outfield. Oh, he's, he's doing acting. He's not stunt man anymore. He's too old for the stunt stuff. Garrett Schultz at the plate. The center fielder has a teammate at first base with two outs. 2-0 Tigers with those coming in the first. The pitch. He reached for it. And that's what Holman can make you do. That's his third strikeout, second in the inning. We move to the bottom of the second inning. Has a 2-0 uh, lead over Kentucky. It's raining again in Kentucky. It was a late start there. And they're pulling the tarp in Kentucky. It's in the top of the third. First game of that series, LSU 2, Kentucky nothing. The Tigers are the only unbeaten Division I softball team in the country. LSU's women's basketball team had no trouble with Auburn in the SEC tournament. A 78-48 victory. That's a fair ball, and Jones is thrown out. Jared Jones bounces out third to first, Hammond to McCormick. But a 30-point win for LSU over Auburn in women's basketball in the that SEC was, tournament. Second uh, highest point differential in SEC tournament history. I mean, that was impressive because uh, sec for, you know, Auburn beat LSU right. earlier this year. And then LSU was like a double-digit favorite in, uh, at home and only won by like five. And, and, and so, uh, you know, the Auburn was going to be quite the test. But it, LSU's women's basketball team has definitely improved a lot over the last two months. And this was a chance to see where they're at, and they just hammered Auburn to head to the semifinals, and they're playing some of their best basketball at the right time. Next up for the Tigers, it'll be Ole Miss or Florida, the winner of that game, which is going on right now. Flage Johnson at 25 points for LSU. Angel Reese, 18 points and 11 rebounds. Five players in double figures for the Tigers. We'll keep you updated as we can with softball action from Kentucky. You got, a, you got a gymnastics update? Because how about this? LSU's gymnastics teams 
not playing at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. They've got a, a, a meet at the Raisin Cane Center in downtown Baton Rouge to get, like, extra credit because it's off campus. It's a neutral site location, so you get some sort of bonus points or something like that. I don't know how the rankings work, but there's a you benefit. You get free canes. That's there's what you get. <laughs> it's a, there's a benefit to having a neutral meet win somewhere else. I think the Tigers scored a 198 four, two, five, which is exceptionally good. Did you just pull that number out? No, no, pull no, that no, number? no, no. I have my sources. Okay. because I. That's down and rolls all the way to the wall. One Tiger scores. And Braswell pulls up at third as he hit a sinking liner. And it got by the center fielder, Schultz. Let's take another look at this. Braswell winds up at third base. Yeah, just a belt high fast well, fastball. Braswell hit it well. Should have just been a single, but it, it skipped under the glove. Now, are they going to rule that a triple or a two-base error? They no, did. no, it's a triple, okay, and it's so his second of the year. Second of the year, which leads the team. The only other guy on the team that has a triple is Jared Jones, which is sort of funny because I don't think he's going to have two. <laughs> he definitely has just the one. Sorry about my smoke signals to you there. <laughs> trying to trying to understand your, your fingers. And uh, now Braswell has been a nice, pleasant surprise. Batting average up over 260. Back to the top of the order for Kling. He tries to bunt it and fouls it back. Kling struck out looking on a 3-2 pitch in the first. LSU has scored two in the first, one in the second, and has a chance to get another one with one out and a runner 90 feet away. Ooh. That's pretty close at third base. Well, that is quite the throw by Matthew Dupre, the catcher for Xavier. You better be heads up down there if you're an LSU runner. Braswell just taking a nice lead. Uh-oh. Got to get back. I mentioned earlier that these teams have never played baseball, but LSU has played eight games against Big East Conference teams. They've won all eight of them. 3-0 against Villanova, 2-0 against Butler. 2-0 versus St. John's and 1-0 versus Connecticut. And Kling goes back to the dugout after striking out for a second time. So he fails to make contact with a runner at third base. This ball, one of the best fastballs he's thrown, had a little sink action on it, the 90 mile an hour pitch, but the bottom fell out of it. You can see Kling's reaction. He, he knows that pitch was not in the strike zone. Well, here's Milam, who socked one up the middle last time for a base hit. His hitting streak is now four consecutive games. Ronnie, I learned a few days ago that Milam's nickname is Monster. Named by his family at birth, Monster. He's been hitting like a monster for these Tigers. And... Oh, pulled the strength. A little 81 mile an hour changeup. Luke Hoskins. A couple of big pitches in a row. These teams will play again tomorrow and Sunday. Sunday's game starts at noon. And remember, that'll be the first start time after sa daylight savings time takes, a, takes effect. Tomorrow's game is at 6 o'clock Central Time. Milam. Sends this one high in the air on the left side, and that's out of play.
Let me correct the starting time for tomorrow. It's a 5 o'clock start, not 6 o'clock. 5 o'clock Central Time tomorrow. These same teams at Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bourbon Field. Milam spo spoils another one. I'm already confused over daylight savings time. It's you, the clock moves forward. Correct. So you're going to lose some sleep. Correct. Saturday night. Correct. So instead of you getting your normal 11 hours, you're going only you're only going to get 10. You know me better than that. <laughs> There's another knock to center field. This one is carrying, and it's out of the reach of Schultz. Another base hit for Milam. He pulls in the second base with a clutch. Two out, double, another RBI. That's his third double of season. And Stephen Milam just really getting it done at the plate Boy, consistently. I mean, look how he just gets through that baseball, just levels it. Ball's running away from the center fielder. Two well-struck balls in a row. I mean, even that base hit that he, the first time up single up the middle was a laser, and then that one. It's a screaming line drive in that left center field gap. He's seeing the ball so well, playing with so much confidence as the freshman. And you know what's impressive about that at bat? Not only the result, but Ronnie, if you'll recall, he fell behind two strikes and then made something happen. Yep. Here's White. Tommy had a base hit up the middle last time. Sends a ground ball to the left side. Stevenson from the shortstop position. Gets it over to his teammate McCormick, and the inning is over. But a triple by Braswell and a two-out RBI double by Milam. And the Astros Foundation College Classic All-Tournament team. Luke Holman off to a sensational start with the Tigers. I'd say National Pitcher of the Month in, in any poll is pretty special. And why would he not be? I mean, he did, has not given up an earned run all season. I mean, it's can't do better than that. He's now struck out 33 in 20 innings. You know, on TV, uh, you got to really pay attention to see, but Holman just really moves the ball in and out, yep. in and out. And sometimes it looks like eh, it's just throwing it down the middle. It's not. I mean, look where Neal is on the outside corner. It's an 0-2 pitch. He just misses maybe two inches off the outside corner. It's a great miss. He usually likes to bear that fastball in on the hands of right-handers. And your point is so well made. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Not only does he throw the vast preponderance of his pitches for strikes, they are strikes where he wants them to be most of the time. I mean, I think this guy could pick up a 6-10 split with a baseball. <laughs> a rare full count for Holman. Let's see if he. Well, we got a little glove malfunction. That'll happen from time to time with catcher's mitts. We've got straps and we've got all sorts of gizmos. No, that's not an Apple Watch. That is the uh, that is the the pitch screen. It'll the pitcher and the catcher have one. It tells you what pitch is coming. Gets signaled in from the dugout, and uh, they, instead of all the signals and fingers, it just tells you fastball. Tells you the zone usually of where you want to throw the baseball. It's pretty incredible the technology nowadays. Ooh, a walk. Third of the year. That's a that's a that's a, a strange walk for Holman. He was ahead 0-2 in the count and lost him and ended up walking him for only the, the third uh, third base on balls allowed this season in over 20 innings. Yeah, you won't see that on an 0-2 count very often from Luke Holman. But the leadoff batter is aboard, and here is Stevenson, the shortstop at the bottom of the order. Stee, right one. Four runs, five hits early for the Tigers. A 
I'd like to have a radar gun on his pegs to first base. I mean, he smokes them over there. <laughs> yeah, Jared Jones has to be uh, heads up over there at first base. He's not, he's not just lobbing it. Very short lead. And a fly ball that King is re uh, Kling is retreating on. He turns around. He's there. Well done by Kling in center field. He read it perfectly off the bat. Ran to the descending point in the flight of the baseball and made the catch. Perfect technique that time by Kling. And wind helped him as well. But, you know, as a outfielder, you want to drop step, turn, Run and get behind the baseball and then work back towards the ball. Don't drift on it. He read he did that perfectly. This is lifted very high in the air. Bingham has plenty of time to get under it in left field. And he squeezes it for the second out. So Hendrickson at the top of the order is now over two. As he flies to left field after striking out to open the game. And here is first baseman Matt McCormick to face Luke Holman. McCormick came in batting 347. He's a preseason all Big East performer. Expected to have a big year and is off to a good start. That ball dribbles away from Neal and Hammock moves up or Hammond moves up. That's going to be a wild pitch. Take a look right here. This breaking ball. Neil does all he can to try to block that one, but it just kind of scooted a little bit to his right side. And he comes right back and finds the strike zone. See that very often. Barehanded batter. No batting gloves. No, that's a rarity for sure. A lot harder to, to go barehanded at the box in June than it is in March. I mean, when it gets 98 degrees and humidity, your hands are sweaty. Sometimes that bat uh, will go flying on a swing. The 2 1 pitch Ooh. is a high strike. McCormick did not like it. I don't blame that big fella. I thought that was a little ball up out of the zone, too. Holman might have got the benefit of that call. He did. That's saying a lot if you agree, because you're an old umpire and you think everything's a strike. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Instead, it goes back, and that's a pretty good stop by Braswell, well away from the bag. Now he wants to talk it over with Holman on the timing of this. And we're going to have a visit to the mound. So everybody on the infield will gather. I bet Nate Yeski the, the first year balls two strikes on McCormick who flied to cling last time. Let's see what Holman dials here. Went back with the fastball. That's tight. I don't know that we've ever seen two full counts in the same inning from Holman. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Well, he, he found himself in a mini jam and then he went and threw probably. Here's Brady Neal. First pitch swinging and he hits a hot ground ball into the glove of the first baseman McCormick for the out. Opponents this year coming into tonight Lynn are batting 302 as a team. 
against Xavier. On the flip side, LSU's pitching staff as a team is only allowing a 217 batting average, almost a 100 point differential. Hayden Travinsky one hops that into left field for a solid base hit. He's one for one tonight. He had a sacrifice fly to center field back in the first inning. Nice extension right there, Hayden Travinsky. Bullet to left field. The Tigers have six base hits. Ashton Larson. Ropes it into right. That's down for a base hit. Another solid knock. Travinsky has to stop with a 90 foot advance and Larson continues to hit when he's get when he gets the chance. Hey Larson just flat swing it's that bat is just kind of flat through the zone and when you don't have a real uh, loopy swing you're able to give yourself a the best chance to hit the baseball uh, you know on the barrel and right there just Stayed, let that ball travel, got deep, and hit a laser to right field. He's now five for eight in limited appearances. Yeah. This brings on Jared Jones. There are so many good young players on this LSU team. It's just uh, a 40 man roster, and many of these on this, you know, that 35 through 40 player could transfer and go somewhere else. and. Those 30 to 40 guys could easily go start in other places. It's just a loaded roster, and I don't know how Jay Johnson's going to do it as far as juggling the lineup, keeping players happy, keeping them sharp in case they're called upon. Take a look right here at uh, Jones. Yes, he clearly went. I call it a foul ball. There you go. And he waves at that when it broke off the end of his bat. Wasn't real close on that breaking ball. And, you know, Jared Jones, remember last year, he had the great start, and then SEC team started kind of getting the book on him where he basically never saw a fastball. And the last month of the season, they went with some older veteran guys. And Jared Jones is going to have to prove – that he can hit that breaking ball because SEC play starts next week on the road at Mississippi State. And I guarantee you, he's just going to see 90% off speed. He was sitting off speed this time. This is where he got caught guessing. He was sitting breaking ball, looking for it, and then got fooled. And then that fastball caught him at the knees. And did you see the drift of that fastball back over the outside corner of the plate? Yeah, nice late run. So here's Mac Bingham out of San Diego. He walked and scored in the second inning. Four runs, seven hits for the Tigers. Braswell is on deck, two outs, two on. A big gap in right center field. The third baseman moves to his left and Hammond makes the play. The Tigers leave a pair on the pop up to the left side. So two base runners thus far for Xavier. A two out hit batter in the second and a leadoff walk in the third. Here's Hayden Christensen. Holman misses. And it's 2 0. Christensen was robbed of a base hit on a fine play at the hot corner by Tommy White. That check swing is ruled a strike. How about that? 2 0 breaking ball, up 4 0. He was able to get him to chase. 
And now the count is level at two. Holman last inning found himself in a little bit of trouble and was able to work out of it. Oh, I thought that one was going to get called a strike. Just missed off the outside edge. Another full count. I mean, you wonder how much the late start could possibly be affecting Luke Holman, who had been so spot perfect through the first three starts of the year. Only had two walks and was just total command. Tonight's been a little bit more of a struggle. I mean, still pitching a shutout. They have yet, by the way, to, to get a hit. Um, but he, his control hasn't been as perfect. And, and how much did the delay... Game started at 8, that's at 6.30. You know, hurry, hurry, wait, stick around. And your routine gets thrown off a little bit. Stop the presses, ladies and gentlemen. He's walked another batter. So he came into the game with two walks in 18 innings. He's walked two tonight. And he's gone to a three-ball, two-strike count three times. See if Xavier can take advantage of the leadoff walk in college baseball. They come around to score more than 50% of the time. One ball, one strike, nobody out. The leadoff batter aboard. Waxman struck out in the second inning. He's from Centennial, Colorado. That's a nice breaker. And it levels the count at two. Clearly there's a, a scout report that LSU is following on some of these hitters. I mean, to be able to throw an off-speed pitch in an obvious hitter's count, knowing that it's a free swinger, they knew that Waxman was going to be hacking, and he did. The 2-2 two -two pitch. A little off the mark, and for the fourth time, we go to three and two. Not missing by much, but he is missing. You can see Holman, the look on his face. He's, a little, he's in as much shock as we are. Facing the 6-4 Waxman. That's hammered foul into the night on the left side. See the old uh, Waxman's got the retro green Easton in his hand. You know that for years and years back in the 80s and 90s, LSU and 2000, LSU was a, an Easton team. Now they're a proud Marucci team. But uh, those green Eastons Ooh, that were hit famous. Him. But that got him on the hand. That's so now we've had a couple of walks. We've had a hit batter. This is very un Holman like that ball with a lot Two of hit run. Batters. And they both were right in on the hands. And there's nobody up in the bullpen, but Jay Johnson is going to go have a visit to try. In his first three starts combined. 18 innings, he had two walks and a hit batter. And three-plus innings, he's had two walks and two hit batters. That's wild. He went back with the breaking pitch and a good result on Jared Cushing. The second baseman flied to Larson in right field last time. <laughs> 
Two on, nobody out for Xavier. Two strikes on Cushing. That's wasted away. The one two pitch sweeps wide. The count is level at two. Good patience that time by Cushing. Now the two two pitch. Another breaking ball, a check swing, but he did not commit. This is a hard take. You got two strikes, but he does hold up. He tried, but he did a good job of holding up. Now the 3-2 pitch again. Right down Main Street, a call third strike. That's number five for Holman. And he's called out. Cushing thought it was ball four. He thought it was down. I. I and he may have a, a case. It's a big call. Bases loaded, no outs is very different than first and second and one out. Is this a ball or a strike? Oof. Well, I read his lips, and I'm surprised he's still in the game. Yeah, well, you know why he's in the game, Lynn? Because Jeff had missed that one. I mean, just plain, plain and simple, we saw the replay. I mean, that ball's down clearly and that's the umpires will let you get a, you know say a few extra words if you and they realize I might have missed that one. Here's Matthew Dupre who was hit by a pitch last time. He's from Sun Prairie Wisconsin. It's anything but sunny right now. <laughs> Probably <laughs> so. He got fooled by that sweeper. And once again, a breaking ball does the job. Six strikeouts for Holman. Now, Holman, whenever he's uh, unsure of what pitch to throw, he's going to that breaking ball. He has been breaking ball heavy this inning, and that was a really good one. By the way, in case you were wondering, in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, it's 37 and rainy right now. Mm. Feels like 27. Yikes. Garrett Schultz out of Nashville. Struck out in the second inning. One or no. He flicks that one foul. I guess you get used to it, but that those. Those pitch screens that are on their wrist are really bulky. You know, the catcher and Holman both on their glove hands have this the uh, the screens that tell you what pitch is coming. It gets called in from the uh, from the dugout. But I mean, that that thing is pretty bulky. I, I don't know. I, to me, that would irritate me if I was pitching and had a big watch on my <laughs> on my on my. Uh, Glove hand. Unless it was a Rolex. <laughs> I mean, that looks like one of those giant swatch watches from yeah. like the, the late 80s. Yeah. With the rubber band, you could change the band out, different colors. I and mean, those were pretty cool. I, I never had enough money to have one of those. The pitch. 
A call third strike on another bender. And he got that curveball working after having some zeros across the board for Xavier. Michael Braswell at the bottom of the order batting for the second time. He skipped a triple past the center fielder last time. That's going to slide off foul and out of play. Going on as he picked up his second triple on the year, which leads the team. Hammond makes a nice play as he goes to his left, and Braswell is retired five to three. Nice play. You want to play third base, the hot corner, they call it, a little in between hop. He went down, got it, and fired a strike across the play. That, that ball was a little. A lot more difficult than it looked. This is a situation you'll see Jay Johnson do a lot of a lot. He'll use his timeouts to sort of use them as a basketball coach would to call a 20 second timeout when the momentum is on the other team side. Things are going a little clunky for you. He will take that offensive timeout talk to his hitter to sort of slow things down a little bit if you're a concession worker working on commission you love him <laughs> here's cling at the top of the order Paxton has struck out twice Three and zero. Oh. And now ball four. So a quick pass to Kling. Bingham walked in the second inning and scored on Braswell's double or triple. And now Kling, after fanning twice, is aboard with the second. Walk of the game from Hoskins. Curious to see how aggressive LSU might be here. At the tall righty, you got a lefty at the plate in Milam. Good opportunity maybe for Kling to steal a bag and get in the scoring position with Milam and White coming up. And, and Xavier thinks the same thing. <laughs> Milam has singled and scored. He has doubled and scored. And his hitting streak is four consecutive games. I know it's early, but 442 is 442. This has popped up on the left side. The shortstop Stevenson is called off by the left fielder who waits for it to come out of the darkness, and that's the first time Milam has been retired a shallow fly ball to left field. Tommy White waits. Runner is on the move. White swings. The peg is to the third base side. And Kling has a stolen base.
Well, this is a weird hack by Tommy White. I mean, it's not going to be a hit and run with two outs. Um, and I think it was just the late movement. I think it was the Hoskins pitch. It, it started out over the plate and into the run on that fastball, just ran in off the plate on his hands. And I think I think if they review this, he's going to be out. I mean, his hand came off the bag. The middle infielder, Cushing, kept the glove on on Kling, and they're going to take a look at this one, and I, I think LSU's going to be out here. Jason Bradley made the call. Watch Kling's hand comes off the bag. The glove is on the knee, stays on the knee, and the hand's off right there. Yep, I think you're right. I think this is going to be reversed. I don't think this will take very long either. That's a really good job by the second baseman, Jared Cushing. You, you want to keep the glove on the runner the entire time because you never know. That's right. You know, when they're going to come off the bag or stand up and, you know, do something. So you just, when you tag them, don't just swipe tag and pull it off. Tag them and keep it on them. Here's our best angle. That left thigh, knee, shin area right there. Gloves on the knee. The hand comes off right there. To me, to me, the look, the, the gloves on the knee, I think, and then he tags them around the ankle. So we'll find out in a moment. Is there enough there? I to, think there is. To overturn it. That's the key. I think there is, but we will let the professionals make the call. Their skipper, Billy O'Connor, hoping that the uh, Umpire see it the same way. Yeah, oh, call him safe. My goodness. All right. So Kling is now five for five on the base paths and is the leading base stealer for the Tigers. Big stolen base with Tommy White at the plate. Well, I guess they saw something I did or it wasn't decisive enough. There you go. Usually the uh, verbiage is something along the lines of confirmed stands, which is essentially we didn't see enough to overturn it or reversed. White has a two out RBI opportunity. Ground ball through the hole, knocked down by the shortstop. We've got to play at third. Very well done by Stevenson and Hammond. Boy, that is a great play by Stevens staff over the last four games. Luke Hammond out of Cincinnati has walked and was stranded at second base. Ball one from Luke Holman. And for the first time tonight, there is bullpen activity for the Tigers. Luke Holman with his 75th pitch of the ball game. This might be his last inning. Yep. Christian Little down there starting to toss. It's a different world in college baseball. We got a Alabama transfer on the mound. You got a, a Vandy transfer in the bullpen. So the, the transfer portal is uh, has changed the landscape of college sports, not just baseball, college sports over the last couple of years. And 
Gone are the days. <laughs> very, very rarely where one guy plays four or five years at the same school. Well, Xavier, if you're not that familiar with it, is a Jesuit school. There are 27 Jesuit colleges and universities and 62 Jesuit high schools in America. Braswell with a long throw, plucked nicely by Jared Jones at first base. Xavier is in a network of 133 Jesuit institutions of higher learning amongst 31 countries across the world. Founded in 1831 after St. Francis Xavier, a Spanish missionary. There are only three older Jesuit colleges in America than the one we're watching tonight. You know, a few years ago, Ronnie Jesuit had to change its change its mascot. The mascot is a musketeer, of course. There's a strike. That looked right down Main Street. So two gone in the inning, and that's strikeout number eight, and that's 70 over the last, what, five games now for the Tigers. There you see fastball. They were trying to throw it up out of the zone, get them to chase, and no need to chase when you catch the top of the strike zone. One of the most notable Alums is uh, New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell. Mm. She went to Xavier in Ohio. Well, the Musketeers had a mascot that was that was scaring children. This is nubbed off the end of the bat. Holman's going to pick it up with his glove hand, makes the backhanded clip, and after struggling a bit in the fourth, uh, it's just uh, it's super intense. And you know, Jay Johnson, who played in a great conference, the the Pac-12, who. Many years ago, you go back to the 70s and 80s and early 80s. I mean, the Pac-12 was the best baseball conference in America. And uh, he was at one of those blue blood schools in Arizona. And he said, there's nothing. You can't compare the, the Pac-12 to what the gauntlet is like playing in the SEC. And anybody can beat anybody in the league, home or away. It is super challenging. I mean, look, just look at LSU last year. They finished third in the SEC. They won the national championship. Brady Neal rolls out to Cushing at second base to get it started in the fifth. And Luke Hoskins has settled in pretty well since the first couple of innings. Here's Travinsky. He has a sacrifice fly. And also a base hit. The shift is on. The whole right side of the diamond is available to Travinsky. That ball hit the front of the plate, home plate. You don't see that very often. Travinsky has played as a severe pull hitter by the infield and the outfield. That got in on the hands for a strike. Travinsky tried to halt that swing, but he fouled it off two and two. Aiden Travinsky from the same high school as uh, the great Todd Walker, Airline High, up in Bossier City, Louisiana. This is hit deep to center field. Schultz is backing up. He's got room in front of the warning track. And there's out number two. And they went right back to that breaking ball, and he was just out in front of it, hit it off the end of the bat. That's about the same spot he lifted the sacrifice fly in the first inning. LSU has had a base runner in every inning. 
But that streak is in jeopardy with two outs. And nobody on here in the fifth. The pitch. Stee right to Larson. Ashton is one for two. That looked like it got Jeff head somewhere. In the head. The back of the head. Let's put you right on the play and listen. Ooh. Oh no, I got him in the, uh, the throat area. Yeah, that's what umpires hate the most when it bounces and comes up under the protection. That's a pretty nice off speed pitch. Last year Larson was drafted in the 20th round by the Minnesota Twins. Final round of the draft. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Overland Park, Kansas, which is a suburb of Kansas City. He grounded out to second base in the first inning. And he singled in the third. The 2 2. Ooh. Right there for a call third strike and a very good inning. So Brown will hit in the sixth position. And we go back to play. Luke Holman just threw his 85th pitch. 50 of them for strikes. Yeah, I thought maybe uh, they might. Pull Luke Holman after the five innings, but uh, he had such an efficient fifth. Only threw ten pitches that inning. They put him back out there. Christian Little is more than ready to go in the bullpen if needed. Matt McCormick is 0 for 2 tonight. He has hit safely in 11 consecutive games. This is the 14th game of the season for the Mus for the uh, Xavier, Xavier team. The Musketeers are seven and six. That's a call third strike. Number nine for Holman. Take a look at the pitch sequence here by Luke Holman. Nice breaking ball. Get it over curve for strike one. Then he gets the foul ball. Now he's ahead 0-2. He's in a rocking chair. Just misses with that breaking ball on the outside. Tries to get him to chase up. And then freezes him with that 93 mile an hour heat on the inside corner. There's a loose ball that got uh, got by from the bullpen. Christensen has been robbed of a base hit by White on a good play at third base, and also he has walked. By the way, that's something you will not get to say next year. That's right. Lo loose ball from the bullpen. Well, if you do, it's a really wild yeah. one. Won't be an issue as the bullpen mounds will be moved. That, that mound, which is LSU's mound, will be beyond the fence in right field and then the uh, the visitor mound will be behind uh, a wall down the left field line. Jones makes the play on the backhanded side and there's out number two. But the LSU bullpen will be actually be under the stands down in the right field corner. And I'm looking forward to that change where there are no bullpen mounds in playable territory. It's amazing over the years. I mean, this stadium was built in 2009 that there haven't been more collisions or twisted ankles or injuries of some kind with those mounds being uh, right there near the field to play. Uh, but that has not been the case. But we've seen a few, but not many. Here's Washman who has struck out and been plunked. No play on this. It's a parking lot souvenir. Yeah. 
There has not been a base runner since Washman was hit by a pitch a couple of innings ago. Since then, one, two, three strikeouts to take care of business in the fourth. Three up, three down with a strikeout in the fifth. Two up, two down with a strikeout in the sixth. Eight in a row retired by Holman. Five by strikeout. The 0 2. Spoiled off to the right side. Five o'clock is the start time tomorrow. Five o'clock Central Time. Noon on Sunday with daylight saving time going into effect. So a noon start. Daylight saving time on Sunday. Remember how you used to have to change the, the clock? Now it just does it. You know, now your phone, your watch, you know, you got the iPhone. I don't or... trust it, though. <laughs> what do you mean you don't trust it? Wait. I don't trust it. Just yours? Just your phone doesn't, doesn't well, I, work? I don't, I don't go around surveying them. I just don't <laughs> trust it. Even your car, if you've got a modern car, the satellite radio and all the clock will adjust itself. I hope so. Washman goes down on strikes with runners in scoring position. And Hoskins has come on to work the sixth. And now the shift is on for Jared Jones. He sends a two hopper to the left of the shortstop. Stevenson throws it low, but it's dug out very nicely by McCormick at first base. And Jared Jones is 0 for 3 with a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Well, how about uh, the rally by Hoskins, Ronnie? Yeah. I mean, he has been really good over the last three innings. I mean, he came in ERA over 9, and it looked like it wasn't going to be a good night. Gave up four runs, five hits through the first two innings. But then he has just uh, been calm. The changeup's been in effect. The breaking ball's been good. He's got a nice little mix going. And uh, he is through three plus innings of zeros against LSU since the second. Well, over the last nine batters, he's allowed one walk. That's it. Eighty-four pitches tonight for Hoskins. Bingham at the plate. He has walked and scored and popped up to third, and he's hit by a pitch. The Tigers continue to be one of the leading teams in the country and being hit by pitches. Yeah, there's nothing Bingham could do about this one. This, this is a breaking ball that just gets him square in the middle of the back. It just uh, slipped out of the hand of Hoskins. But, you know, LSU trains and, you know, has a plan of how to get a lot of hit by pitches. But that was, uh, that didn't take any plan. That ball just found him. That's the 34th time LSU has been plunked. Runner is away. Liner to third. This is going to be a very easy double play. Hammond leaped to catch that line drive off the bat, and he's allowed five base hits. Well, you know, it's going to be a constant battle for this LSU bullpen internally. There's so many options. There's so many different players. There's so much talent that Jay Johnson has in that bullpen. He's going to have to sift and work through and see who gets on a little run, who gets consistent, who goes out there four out every five times and does their job. And Christian Little's trying to put his name in that hat and uh, see if he can be relied upon in crucial situations. So Holman goes six innings, does not allow a hit. So what does that bring him up to? 24 innings with eight hits allowed? Yeah. You know what's funny is that the bar is so high for Luke Holman that it felt like he struggled a little bit tonight, but yet he literally struck out 10, didn't give up a hit through six innings. But because he had five or six full counts, he walked a couple, he hit a couple. He's been so good, so perfect that it felt like it was a little it was a little difficult for him, but yet big picture, he was absolutely dominant.
Cushing is 0 for 2. He has fly to right and struck out. The shift is on for him. Three infielders on the left side for LSU. But the outfield is playing him the other way. This will be a play for the shortstop. Braswell slings it over. Jones stretches out number one. Cushing out on a 6 3 put out. You see the big fella Jones at first base who made a heck of a defensive play late in the game against the Southeastern Lions uh, the other night diving to his right backhanded play the, with the flip to the pitcher covering. But not only can he hit but his defense is getting better and better over there at first as well. And now Jeff Head, the home plate umpire is going to give the uh, LSU catcher Brady Neal an opportunity to catch his breath here as this one clipped him. A little foul ball right off the thigh. Brown is backpedaling quickly reaches up and plays it off the wall. That'll be a double by Dupre and the first base hit tonight for Xavier. That's his fifth double of the year. This ball was hit well to right field. Brown sort of broke in and the ball got up in the wind and spun away from him a little bit. A little one hopper off the base of the wall. That's the praise fifth double which ties the team in that for the team lead in that category. LSU's bullpen is stirring a bit. It's only a 4 0 lead. Two in the first and two in the second for the Tigers. And the pitch is upstairs to Schultz. Garrett has struck out twice. Nate Ackenhausen is in the bullpen. And Gidry is as well. Steve, right. A runner at second base, that's Dupre. With a one out double. Four nothing Tigers. A liner to right. That's a base hit. Dupre rounds third, but he'll put on the brakes with a four nothing deficit. Back to back base hits. The first two of the game have come from Dupre and Schultz. And back to back stingers that fastball elevated up in the letters too much of the plate too high in the zone and after the pitch had changed Holman out little in it's an opportunity for Xavier to regroup and start over and now they put a little pressure on the Tigers. Here's Luke Hammond. Christian Little rocks and delivers. He throws it hard, but he misses away. That's too tall. It's two and oh. The infield is back with one out and a four nothing lead for the Tigers. Here's the pitch to Luke Hammond. 
hit sharply to Milam. Braswell crosses the second base, fires it over to first. It's a 4 6 3 double play. Milam, Braswell, and Jones turn it over. Hall. And then Creighton and Georgetown, St. John's Butler and Villanova. How about this? Hoskins still throwing here in the seventh. 87 pitches. Well, he's really turned it around after the second inning. Now, this is actually, I mean, if he, especially if he can finish, Lynn, if he can go seven innings and in essence put maybe five zeros up on the board, that's I mean, going to do a lot for him maybe to turn around the rough start to his season. Well, of the last 12 batters he's faced, there have been only two base runners, no hits, one walk and a hit batter. Softball has resumed in Kentucky. This is lifted up the elevator shaft on the left side. Stevenson, the shortstop, waits for it to come out, come down, and he's got it. So Kling is 0 for 3 with a walk. LSU 5, Kentucky 1 in the bottom of the fourth. The game started late and then there was a rain delay. But the Tigers are looking to maintain their position as the only unbeaten softball team in America. Milam slices that off and it's hooking foul. Monster Milam at the plate. Milam hit that ball down there by the Kona ice stands. Not a lot of cone ice, uh, you know, snowballs being sold tonight on this cool evening. That's one of your favorites, though, oh, isn't it? But when it, wait, when that temperature gets above 75, give me a 32 ounce cone ice, coach, and I'm a happy man. That's your go-to strawberry, maybe a little bubble gum. 32 ounce. I mean, I, that's, if they had a bigger cup, I'd, I'd get sure, that one. But that's, sure. I think, the biggest they go. I'm a sucker for a snow. Give me snowballs over ice cream. That's how much I like snowballs. Really? Yeah. Much prefer it. Now it's snowballs and not snow cones with you? Yeah. Grew up in New Orleans originally, so I'm a snowball guy. Milam goes down on strikes. I'll tell you what, Luke Hoskins has been superbly impressive since the second inning. Pulled the string. Woo, that I mean, one dropped off, didn't it? Took something off, had a good bender, got under the bat. Milam, who's been on, in Fuego this year, swings over the top of it. He is one out away from uh, really having a heck of a performance uh, over the last five innings. Well, he's thrown a shutout over the last five to this point with precious few base runners. Tommy White is backed away. Two and one. The shift is on again. But it's interesting to me, Ronnie, how the infield is playing him to pull on the left side. The outfield is playing him deep to the other way. Now well, the data must show it, Lynn. I mean, you know, sure. they've got all the data. Ground balls, left side, fly balls, right center. That pitch is there. It's three and two. Here comes the 100th pitch of the game for Luke Hoskins. And over the last five innings, he's been really good.
White hits it deep to center field, but it's playable, and Schultz drifts to his left. He's got it. And that retires the side. So another very good inning in the seventh for Hoskins. He didn't give up any hits. Walked two, struck out ten. Christian Little is on for his second inning of relief. And in the first game ever on the baseball diamond between LSU and Xavier, the defending national champion Tigers have a 4-0 lead. Here's Grant Stevens. And the count is 2-0 from Christian Little. Stevenson at the bottom of the order has flied to center and Holman struck him out. That's a quick strike on the outer part of the plate. 94 by Christian Little. And that'll do it for Stevenson. His second strikeout. He's 0 for 3. This is a really good breaking ball. A fastball away, comes back with a curveball in the inside corner. Sort of froze Stevenson. He thought it was in, didn't like the call, and was frustrated walking back to the dugout. Here's Hendrickson at the top of the order. He has struck out, fly to left, and grounded back to the pitcher. Out of Farmington, Minnesota. Two. He lunged at it and spoils it. Ninety five. That was the uh, best heater of the night by Christian Little. He. he Reaches back for a little extra right here. Brady Neal sets up, catches the outside corner. Neal with a good frame job to get the call. And Kirsten Little working fast, throwing hard right now. There's a shot up the middle by McCormick. That's his first base hit tonight. Now McCormick barehanded, no gloves, preseason all big East performer, and he turned that 93 mile an hour offering around. That one went back about 103 up the middle. What he's done is extended his hitting streak now to 12 consecutive games. So McCormick with a base hit in the eighth now is hit safely in a dozen games in a row. That knock comes with two outs after a couple of strikeouts. And here is Christensen, strike one. One, one pitch. Time called. They're going to call a ball. They're going to call a ball. 
Yeah, Little was holding the ball too long, the 22nd clock. Neal was trying to tell him to step off, and uh, he held on to it. So 1-1 one, one count becomes a 2-1 count, and he misses with the breaking ball. The 22nd clock clearly expired. You don't see that very often. I mean, nope, it's, you don't. It's extremely rare when you see a clock violation. I mean, there's ball four. I mean, that's it's got to be rattling for a pitcher. You're standing there. You got a one one count. You're trying to get your signal straight, figure out what you want to do. And all of a sudden ball and then you kind of lose your focus. And now they're going to the postseason. Had some good moments. Trying to get back to that form. He's allowed five hits this year. He's got Waxman in front of him with two strikeouts and a hit batter to his credit. Herring delivers and throws it low. Holman started. He went six innings, did not allow a hit. He walked two, plunked two, struck out ten. Little came on to work the seventh. He gave up a couple of base hits, but was helped by a 4-6-3 double play. He struck out the first two batters he faced in the in the eighth. But then allowed a base hit and a walk and now it's Herring. Herring a year ago as he was an SEC first year academic honor roll student five wins ERA of three point nine three picked up a win. In the regional against Oregon State in relief. And there's a check swing and a strikeout. Oh, this is going to get a coach tossed. No question about it. It was the first base umpire. Jeremy Dupree. Billy O'Connor has had enough. You could read his lips. Well, the first but the first base umpire Jeremy Dupree made the call. Here's the swing. 50 50. It's definitely 50 50. I, I, I don't think he went, but it's not probably it's probably not as egregious as what Billy O'Connor thinks. But I think this is a culmination of a lot of calls that have gone close calls that have gone against Xavier tonight. I mean, they had the, the, the steal at second. They thought they had the, we'll say that. I'm a fan of the high pants, got the striped cool socks going. Let's see if he gives them some good mojo. Brady Neal, the first hitter. Ball one. There you go. Look at those blue socks with the white stripes. Some of the players go with the, most of the players go with the low pants. He's going with the high sock, high pants. And obviously has a good live arm, 90 miles an hour with the two straight fastballs for Lambden. On a Rancho Santa Margarita, California. That makes that makes you thirsty. Just read. Yes, it. it does. Was thinking the same thing. So I really don't know if this is a test run for Lambden. Or they're just using him to eat up what could be the last inning defensively. I mean, a four-nothing ball game. You would think that Xavier's still in this game. I mean, technically, you load the bases, one sure. swing, you tie game. Sure. So four-nothing is not a, a, a an eat-up innings type game. But there, you see Hoskins' numbers—a really nice performance for this junior's best outing of the year: 101 pitches, seven innings, seven hits, and. But he was dominant he from the third inning on. He only allowed two hits over the last five innings. This will be a play for Hammond at third or the shortstop. And it's caught in foul ground by Stevens in the shortstop. Oh. 
So Brady Neal is one for four. His base hit was a double in the first and it produced a run. This brings on Travinsky. Hayden had a sacrifice fly in the first. He singled in the third and he flied out to deep center field in the fifth inning. That's high and tight. You mentioned how Lambden is an infielder and has not made an appearance yet this year. That's definitely an infielder's glove. That is not a pitcher's mitt that you're seeing right there with all those colors. It's a small glove and it's got a rainbow of colors. Travinsky hits a sinking liner that's snared by the third baseman just off the dirt. They turned him loose. 3-0. So Hammond plucks that one just off the dirt at third. And there are two outs. You know, we were talking earlier about Xavier University of uh, 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 notable alums. There's a New Orleans Pelican, Najee Marshall, who's been with the team since 2020. That was a, a Xavier from this Xavier? So, yeah, because I screwed up earlier and I'm, I'm, I typed in Xavier prominent alums. You got to make sure you say Ohio because yeah, that's, there's a bunch of Xaviers. Yeah, because I, I got Mayor Cantrell listed as Z she went to Xavier New Orleans, not Xavier Ohio. But Najee Marshall, who's had a heck of a career for the Pelicans, is a former Musketeer. There's been a lot of great basketball players that have come out as they one of my favorite David West who played a number of different teams but mostly with the I remember with the Phoenix Suns was a heck of a player. David West longtime Pelican another another West as well. David West was such a good New Orleans Pelican he played from 2010 all the way to. 2004 to 2003 to 2011 long time great player in New Orleans when they were the I think the what the Hornets back then. Brown in his first at bat lines it out to maintain the shutout we go to the ninth Cushing leads off against Herring and can't find the first one Herring working quickly swing and a miss. The outfield medium depth pretty much straight away maybe a little bit toward the right side. Cushing has flied to right struck out and grounded out to shortstop the pitch. Off the mark just by a little Whew, that did not miss by much good mm -mm. good 0 2 pitch by Herring. 92 on the heater. Just a little low. Alex Malazzo is catching for the Tigers. So Malazzo has come on as a defensive replacement. And he is behind the plate for LSU. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. LSU pitching. has accounted for let's see 13 strikeouts unofficially and Herring has fanned the two batters he's faced and Herring with that sharp breaking ball trusting Malazzo behind the plate and he starts to pray with a strike Alex Malazzo so smooth defensively Excellent hands, very good technique blocking balls. 
Jones drifts over in foul territory. Now he leans back and cannot make the catch. He overran it, and it was curling back toward the infield. Mm. Well, good and bad. Bad that he dropped it. Good. Now Herring gets a chance at a strikeout. But uh, this one, the ball just moved in the air, and he just flat out missed it. He's very fortunate for LSU that it was foul. It was about a foot, you know, about a foot right of the uh, foul line. If that ball lands fair territory, that would have been maybe a double. That's the first error of the game. And the 0 2 pitch is outside one and two. The last time Dupre had it hit a double, a one hopper off the wall, right center. It's last time up, and not this time, as Herring goes back to that excellent slider, the 84 mile an hour slider. Let's update the strikeout numbers. It's 15. Holman had 10. Little fan two. Herring has recorded three outs all by strikeout. And now Garrett Schultz represents the last hope for Xavier. Herring not taking a lot of time between pitches. Pours in a strike. These teams will play again tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock Central Time and then at noon Daylight Saving Time on Sunday. Jake Brown waits for it. He backs up. He's got it. And the Tigers win by shutout. 4-0 the final. All of the scoring coming.